How is it possible that a home inspector could walk into a home and miss things right from the front door? Losing heat and we're gaining cold. So where is it coming from and where is it going? We did not expect, you know, the seriousness of these issues to come up. Absolute no-no. This is the stuff that you don't wake up from. You didn't do that. No. Dan and Anita were looking for very specific things when buying a new home. They were looking for a mature neighborhood as well as a home that was close to their parents. They brought in a home inspector. Good things in the report that I want to see, including pictures. Two thumbs up. The home inspector said only minor repairs. There's no problems. Now Anita and Dan are just a little worried they may have some big problems. I'm here to ask questions, get answers, and I'm here to do a homes inspection. I'll make it right. We already had a sense of uh, what street we liked and what neighborhood. And this particular street, we really liked that there was park at the end of the road. So that was a big selling feature for us. And we came into the home, and we actually, the family actually was at, in, at home during the viewing. And they seemed like a very nice family. And they were sitting in the office, the mom and one of, one of their kids was sitting doing homework. So And we had a vision of, wow, that could be us one day yeah. with our kids sitting in the office. And um, they were at the computer reading a book, and it seemed wow, this is great, this is a family home and there's the family to prove it. It also was, you know, colorful and um, it was very clean, well kept, so that, you know, made us feel like we had a very good feel. good feel. Going to the rooms, the they've done some work on the home and um, knowing that we ha could go into a house and not do too much work <laughs> um, seemed good. We were told we had till 11 o'clock to put in an offer, otherwise someone else is gonna take it. And we were told if you want the home inspection, I have a home inspector. If there's no one else to look for, just use him, and he'll do it the following morning. Based on what I saw and what he saw, he uh, really urged me to consider buying this home. And not really uh, pressuring me, but that everything's fine. He was like, it's, it's turnkey, Anita, it's turnkey, because that's what the inspector kept on saying. Like, it was just this perfect home, and there really wouldn't be anything for us to, to do when we, when we moved in. It must be Anita. Yes. I'm Mike. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Dan. Nice to meet you. Pleasure Mike. to meet you. We knew that the front of the home was some kind of done as an extension, and I just kept on asking him to ask the inspector, anyway. is it, does it look like it's built okay? How does it look? And he kept on saying it's perfect, like this is done perfect and it's beautiful. This used to be the porch of the house. This was an outside zone. Yes. Right. So this is not more than likely insulated correctly, cool. insulated correctly, no heat. Originally this was a porch, and at some point it was closed in to make a foyer. Directly below it is a cold cellar, which should be vented outside. I was told by the Realtor inspector, wow, come winter, how much warmer your house is going to be because, you know, it's enclosed. And uh, basically, it's the coldest part of the home. <laughs> it's going to drive the cold in. I'll have to see more of the garage in a moment. I want to see under this right away. So this is directly below the old porch. OK. This is your garage? Yes. OK. We have a high vent and we have a low vent. This creates a natural airflow throughout your cold room. Love it. I absolutely love it. But somebody's vented it into the garage. Absolute no-no. Did the home inspector see this? It's not in the report. That line there draws the cool air down to the bottom. So if you have the off-gassing in, in the garage from your car... Mm -hmm. It's going to bring it right... Right into your house. house. But you're saying previously it wasn't somebody did that... Secondary. Somebody's made changes. Somebody's made changes. What I want to know is, did the inspector, you didn't do this. No. So the inspector should have caught this and red flagged it, big red flag, not a little tiny one, a really big red flag. Why did they draw all this? Oh, I'm sorry, no. anything I break, no. I'm going <laughs> to fix. OK, there's your steel beam. And that looks like a really small beam, actually. Look at what's holding it. Bricks? There used to be some mortar, I guess. It's just sitting on it. So that you know, just caught my eye. Why'd they close that up? Because they, normally they don't. Now, a home inspector's not supposed to take off drywall, but there's evidence here. I can see the bricks. What's supporting this? Why is it covered up? What is that? We've been told that uh, this is a ventilation for 
basically the furnace. Based on the inspection report, we replaced the furnace. We didn't want to wait for it to break down, uh, especially with the young kids in the house. Don't ever install anything like this. One, plastic wrapped around insulation, which we want to do from the wall out to about here. But don't leave the plastic where it's one inch away from the hottest pipe here. Let's go upstairs. Okay. You didn't do that. No. Seeing the bathtub uh, in the master bedroom bathroom was um, a surprise. Do you see how low that tub is? Yes. Do you step down to actually shower in there? Yeah, that's Unbelievably all we use it for a shower. Yeah. I asked the inspector, is this safe? And it never really became a safety issue, more of an aesthetic issue in his mind. When have you ever seen a tub in a floor? Not up on the floor, in the floor. Get some glass doors attached to the, the walls, and it's just going to be like a perfect <laughs> shower. Who said that? The home the inspector. inspector. I really thought, OK, if that's all I got to do is put glass doors, that seems easy enough. If somebody did this after the fact, and that means they've cut out structure to put in a tub, did they re-beef it to hold the tub? I don't know. It's kind of interesting when the shower curtains close, you don't even see the tub. It's just a hole. It's like this bottomless just, yeah, pit. So. <laughs> I've already seen enough of your house, and there's, I can already tell there's a lot of problems. I want to see your garage. Okay. okay, follow me. <laughs> Whoever installed this door did it wrong. What did they do wrong? Well, you don't do it this way. They built the door out. This door must be within the wall. Look at any path of gases that can come in, not to mention your door moves. Any path of gases that come in, was this like this? Yes. You didn't do anything? No. Okay, were the screens there? Yes. Wow, you got a lot of leakage here. In the report, the home inspector said that you should close off the hose in the garage and plaster, and for the reasons of off-gassing. You should have done that. Because with the holes open, this is all the allowance, and never mind the vents that are right here to the cold room, all the gases from your car parking in it will be pulled into the house. Enough's enough. I'm going to have to open up all kinds of things. I'm going to check the structure of the tub. I'm going to check the electrical. I'm going to check everything to do with the off-gassing, both from the furnace and the garage. I'm going to make a big mess of your home. Then I'm going to pull you back. I'm going to tell you what I found, what I have to do to fix it, and how we're going to make your life better. You know, it's all about the subject of what's coming in from that area. Right there, those two pipes from the garage. What's the problem? Carbon monoxide coming in from the car. What's not here? a smoke detector, nor do I see a carbon monoxide detector. Our bedroom is freezing in the winter months. But the inspector said, don't worry, not the majority of your room is on the garage, so you're not going to have a problem at all. You know what? I love my job. Every time I come to a house, there's always something different. It's never the same. You know, people say to me, is there always one thing wrong? Well, normally, if there's one thing wrong, there's a lot wrong. What's bad about this is that uh, reading the report from the home inspector, it was pretty good explanation. I love that he took the pictures and everything and talked to the homeowners. Obviously, he found the holes in the ceiling and let them know you should address this, which was great information. Totally missed the vents to the basement. Talk about a direct line of bringing the gassing from your vehicle inside the house. It is very direct. Someone goes to the extreme of putting caulking around the light, which I want to see to stop the off-gassing, but minimum code says we must have two layers of plaster on the drywall that leads to the interior of the home. Why? It's to stop the off-gassing of vehicles from getting in. But if we look at the original things, the tape is falling off absolutely everywhere. If a car's running in the garage, the fumes are going to get in anywhere they can, not to mention cutting holes in the ceiling and not fixing it. This is a recipe for disaster. Someone's done all kinds of holes. And you know what? I want to know why. I really do. Oh, I know why. Because they're trying to insulate more. They're trying to stop it from coming in. That's why they broke it all. So, 
I mean, they try to solve one problem by putting in more insulation right underneath the floor to stop that cold draft from upstairs, obvious. Then they put up the drywall pieces that they put in, but they forgot to tape and plaster them. They keep the off-gasses out, try to solve one problem, but create an even worse problem. Cold's not so bad. The off-gasses will absolutely kill you. Now, could the homeowner have something to bargain with to buy this house? The answer is yes. You show problems. What can it lead to? How much does it cost approximately to fix? Do you want to buy the house? You know, it, all, it looks good. Somebody putting up a slate tile, tiling that front concrete, which is a great concrete edge, and they even tiled the concrete step that's around the corner. The homeowners showed it to me. It's never going to work. Why is it never going to work? Well, you need to use all the right products, all the exterior products. The moisture will get in the mortar and underneath the tile, freeze in the winter, break, push the tile off, much like we see. Looks good, doesn't mean it is good. We can see the soffit above this brick. This is a new brick. Another sign the home inspector should have caught. They've actually bricked this wall, and there's the soffit in the wall right there, which means they even left the soffit in place. I think they drywalled right over the soffit. So they had something to screw to, but it's not an insulated zone. Here's a perforated soffit where cold air is allowed to get in that attic zone that's above the door. And we want it in there. We want it cold. We want it as cold as outside, not hot. Problem is, is driving the cold air in with more than likely no insulation in here, especially if they drywall right to the soffit. No wonder it's cold. Looks like I'm going to be pulling down all kinds of things. The stone here, this is pretty sad, actually. This was all laid on earth. It needs to go on top of a pad. As we take a look at this, it waves every which way down through, and the home inspector did tell the homeowner about it. This area here is the bad zone, and it's been like this for years. Why is this falling down? Because water will make a path of least resistance. If this area is the lowest point, the water will continue to wash this out, because it just keeps going in there. Think of a stream, how it eats its way out over years and becomes a river, becomes a lake, because it just it's running and it eats away the earth. Same way it's doing here. The biggest problem of all is we're allowing water to penetrate directly to the foundation. Absolute no-no. Someone put in new pot lights all around the dining room. Drilled holes in the ceiling to see where the floor joists were so they could determine where to put the pot lights. But go ahead, drill a bunch of holes. Where's the beams? <laughs> Not just one hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They drilled through the floor joists to run the wiring for the lights. What a way to fix it, eh? I think I could have done a little better than that. See, here's how the pot lights should have been done. It's a low voltage, and what I really like is that it's just a nice little puck diameter, no holes drilled, which now we've got to question ourselves, how do they run the wires? Again, the pot lights in the ceiling showing a bigger excussion plate instead of just small. Is that ever strange? Every one of those are bent. That's metal. My worry is that it's not so much that it looks sloppy as the wiring correct. I don't know. I got a lot to fix in this house. So this is the cold bedroom. This area right here, boom, is over top of the garage. Is that an issue? Well, is it insulated right? What's the biggest issue that I see? Look at this. I love my job. It's all for a reason. What's this? That's the register. That's required by code to be at the window to give us heat. The garage is beneath us. With all the holes in the ceiling and everything they have down there, it's just going to bring all that gases. That'll be the first spot it comes through is the register. What's that? Their bed. This is the strangest tub I've ever seen. There's nothing against code and putting the tub in the floor. But let's think about it for a second. Is it smart? One, you're turning on the tap. Let's see, let's see, let's see, look at this. Way down here, you're turning on the tap. That's kind of strange, eh? Shouldn't the tap be up here in reachable position? Two, I'm going to get in the tub, not to mention hit my head on this one bar because it's obviously the curtains need to get to a certain distance. You need custom curtains. Once you step in the tub, that's why there's a slip mat in the tub, you step down and imagine water in here and you slip. You fall, you break your back, you break your, your, your rear totally by slipping and falling and you have no choice but to get down in here to get a shower head. 
What morons does, does the plumbing here? Get that handle up here. If you choose to put the tub in the floor, get the handle up to reachable position. Get the shower head up a little higher and make sure you accommodate a tub in a floor. Not something I would do. Oh, I can see that condensation big time. It's not just the condensation. It's a smart idea to put the exhaust fan in that column and pick up that uh, moisture that comes from the shower, but it's not doing its job. Two exhaust fans. Are they working? That is the question. Could be a whole bathroom job. Mr. Bennett, did you have a good weekend? It was an excellent weekend. Got a few problems with this house. Let's start in the front. Well, at least there's air conditioning. Oh, that feels better. All right. You walk in the front door and you see <laughs> an outside window. window. Yeah. yeah. So what does that tell you? That this used to be a porch. This used to be the front porch, which means this used to be the door, right? Right. So somebody's tiled the floor afterwards. It's cracked right along it. But I mean, I'm not, I don't care so much about how they see that. Yeah. Home inspector sees it. What's behind it is the question. Not so much here. We know this is an exterior wall. They've made an exterior wall now. So it's, this is a freezing area. Yeah. No heat, which has affected the cold room. <sighs> Ooh. Look at the door. So somebody prior to the homeowners yep. installed the door. Obviously, we know it's wrong. There's all kinds of leakage around the door, both the bottom, everything to do with and installed incorrectly. Not to mention the holes in the ceiling? Yeah, now he did catch that. He took some pictures. He didn't really talk too much about the taping that was falling everywhere, yeah. but the holes he talked about and they needed to be done. More than anything, this is an attic zone and I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about where it attaches to the right. house. So this is huge. So let's start by, there's the two vents. Yeah. Absolutely. Not <laughs> yeah, let's start funny. by taking everything down off of here. All right. And uh, then we're going to open all this up. We're going to have some fun. Let's get to work. Let's do it. All right. There you go. Now take it out, dismantle it. OK, I want to keep the plywood, guys, please. And keep the scrap wood just in case we need to do any tarping or anything like that, OK? okay. I saw the insulation. Yep. Now, was it filled right to the, the front here? No, it wasn't. There was gaps everywhere. Now, what they did is they just basically shoved it up there and then nailed it all in. Now, so. that's, that's just done afterwards, right? Somebody was trying to yeah. add more insulation. Any insulation here? No. OK, well, Nothing. we can see the block wall up there, right? I know. OK, so we probably have a ton of leakage in that wall there, and obviously a lot of leakage here. When I came back last time, I saw you had the pieces of rigid foam off. That's right. And I see nothing but a ductwork, right? right? Yeah. Slice it right across and open this all up. Right to the back wall. OK, right. so that wall, that wall, and right to the rafter. On it. Thank you. You need to know all the right information. This is the single most expensive investment of anyone's life, is buying a house. They're relying on you, the home inspector. This is not a turnkey home. This, this home has serious safety and health concerns. That, and we're very surprised about that. I think it's just very hard for us to even absorb now. This wall allows a lot of cold air in the winter. Remember, this area is the cold zone, right? The attic. Looks pretty good up there. This here is the front porch. And this is the culprit of why they're freezing. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Not only did they drive all over the soffit, there's just insulation lying up here, totally just lying there. So now, because this attic is a cold zone, it will bleed all the cold air into here, which transfers it in the inside of the house. So this is totally why it's so cold. Imagine all that cold draft coming from the attic space right in the house. Yeah. All right, what we're gonna do is, let's go inside for a sec. All right. You got the trim off and everything, yes? Yep, everything's ready to go. Okay, you can start by taking down the whole ceiling. Okay. I don't think you have to take down the whole wall because the wall in that room stops about here. Right. So pick your point, maybe by the baseboard here, cut it right up, remove everything here yep. and the ceiling and that side. Don't okay. touch this yet. All right. So Mike was right again. They left the aluminum up on the old port ceiling and they screwed the drywall right to it. Unbelievable. 
you can understand why this was cold, eh, Robbie? Mm -hmm. the insulation isn't exactly done properly. When you have insulation just looking like this, I wonder why it was cold. Just gonna take the ceiling out to see what I see. This bathroom is directly below the ensuite bathroom upstairs. I'm dropping the ceiling just to see how that sunken bathtub is supported. Oh, guess that was a garbage dump. Okay, there's the tub. That's the standard tub. It's right in the floor. Below the floor. They did structure for it. So they do have structure to support the tub, but at this point, it doesn't matter. It's all coming out and being redone. Well, unfortunately, this tub does meet code. It is the silliest thing I've seen. It's, it's one of the most dangerous things I've seen. Now, nothing states that this is illegal because we're less than two feet off the main floor. But what do we have here? We have a major trip hazard right here. We do have a sunken tub. We have kids here with a wet floor. They take a slip on that floor. They're right in the tub. They're hurting themselves. When we bring this up, all of a sudden, my shower is up here. What's wrong with this? So right now, because of this, I have to take out this wall, this wall, this wall, some of the tiles around this tub, try and get this tub out, patch the floor, redo the walls, redo the tiles. It's a lot of work for a very silly and dangerous idea. Fence me and you here. Hey, buddy. Well, they do a good job of tearing it out. OK, so we know there's a brick wall here. Yep. Here. This is original. Look at what they buried. Look at the plug down there. Yeah, that's not allowed whatsoever. I can see the void there. Now, what, whatever reason they have the uh, lintel up above the it's window. It's kind of strange, right? But that's going to be a cold spot. Right. Here's the biggest cold spot of all. Well, and did you see the insulation? The insulation was just basically pushed in. Maybe I'll pull the roof, spray everything down here, spray the floor, spray all that, spray oh, it down. Right around it, but spray. And then put the roof back on and just put a vent in there. It'll be fine. I'm al almost wondering if we should pull the drywall down on this wall and just leave an see? exposed brick wall. Do it, okay? All right. When you pull the store, we'll leave it up for today. All right. What I want you to do is I want you to start cutting blocking for all these. All right. And just get ready for spray foam, okay? Yeah. Now, we left the foyer ceiling open so that insulation guys have easy access to spray the walls in the attic above. Next, they'll move into the garage to do the same thing. And while they're in there, we will prep for them to spray the foyer ceiling. What we're gonna do is install a temporary plastic vapor barrier, then over that, we use plywood. The spray foam will actually act as a vapor barrier. So once it's cured, we'll remove the plywood and plastic and install our mold-resistant drywall. You know what, it's 40 degrees Celsius outside. Yes. Probably around 50 up there. Mm -hmm. So, block, scissors, papers. Ha. One, two, three. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at we're. Oh, you're gonna wrap, are you? Uh, yeah. Sorry, you don't. So Mike's still in it. You're this out, buddy. A, <laughs> no, 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 no. Paper wraps rock, but that's not a rock. That's my fist. That means I win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoever loses All goes. Right. Did you own the attic? Have you ever been in the attic? No. The inspector stood there for about 30 seconds, had a little flashlight. And he has it. And that's it. One, two, two scissors. Oh. oh! MJ, I'm sorry, my man. I already know the way this is going to go. 
feeling. Good luck, buddy. You're looking for insulation. You're gonna look at if there's any mold on the roof. Okay, you're gonna look for proper venting. Check to see if there's any other issues up there. Okay. Gonna need to strip down so if I can get some privacy, please. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. It's dead. So there's looks like inch and a half to two inch styrofoam around the window. So what'd you find? Uh, there's about eight to 10 inches of uh, blown in. Okay, so definitely not enough. We want to top that up. Um, there was three vents. Three roof vents, okay. So we want to talk to Steve about that. He might want to add another one. No baffles. No soffit venting. No soffit. And it's blown in insulation, okay. So what about mold, any signs of leaking? Never saw any mold, no really water damage or anything like that. Awesome, it looks like I found myself my mold. You're my man from now on. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. No problem. So, Nicole, you can actually see this walkway is dipping right into this wall right here, the foundation wall, which we don't want. That's a major dip. It's getting a lot of water. I'm assuming it's from the east trough up here, which Steve is here to look at. I want to sort of fix this for them. Mike would like to as well. It's just all the water's just sitting here like a puddle. So I want you to tear this area up right here, okay? Okay. When I sent MJ up into the attic, he noticed that the power vent was not working. Steve Graves is here to sort out all the ventilation issues in this house. Power vents are fine. The thing is they're mechanical, right? Right. And if they're not on a thermostat, then... Because uh, then they're always going. They're either no, on no. or they're off. Right. Right. Yeah. The other issue is having a regular roof vent nearby is that will become the intake source for the power vent. Right, because that's so strong pulling out, you mean? It's just going to use those? Yeah, so it'll, vent, it'll vent from the roof vent to the power vent, and it won't necessarily draw from the soffits. All right, other than that, do you see a little bit of curling up there? A little bit, probably because of the venting issues. Just the, because the actual shingles are actually cooking up there? Yeah. It's just getting too hot in the attic. It's getting a little too hot yeah. in the attic. You know, they're not in terrible shape, but um, if it's vented properly, you get a lot more life out of the shingles. Right. right. So Steve's guys are on the roof to close off the two vents that are competing with the power vents. Now, they're also installing a new thermostat in the attic, so the power vent will only come on when it needs to. My crew is here today to do drywall. We have the front foyer to do and the garage. Also, Solutions is here today to look at all the electrical issues in the house. So, Joe, please, let's investigate these holes now. I know Mike really wants to take a look at them. We're hoping that these wires that they ran from pot light to pot light are actually through the middle of our joists. Is that correct? Well, that's what we're hoping, but what you see here, it's going to either be right at the bottom of the joist or underneath the joist. Which means you want me to drop this ceiling. Worst case, the ceiling's coming down. And there we go, Damon. Oh, you got to be kidding me. It's coming down. Yeah, I can't leave that like that. Code I can't says even I, fight you on this. Code okay. says I, it has to be no, center absolutely. of the joist. I know it's a ceiling. What are the odds of somebody putting something through it? But there is a possibility, right? So by code, any wiring that runs through the ceiling has to be at least two inches up from the edge of the joist. Any less than someone could put a nail or a screw through the wire, and that is a shock hazard. Gary, this is the little issue I was talking about. Not so much an issue. I just wanted you to, uh, to tell me what you thought of it. I mean, we have a lower fan on this part, and they went and installed another fan up there, and now you can see why. Look at the staining of the water just in this area. I think we should eliminate the two. We'll put one high up in the... Uh in the high spot here. So you're okay with eliminating the lower yeah, one? Yeah, right. Well, this one's pulling. What about the other one? I don't think the other one's pulling. It's got cobwebs all over it, so. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> point, man. Oh, look at that. That's a good eye, yeah. Cobwebs indicate that there's no pull. Yeah. Otherwise, there'd be no spiders. All right, buddy. What's up? You know they've dropped this soon? They have dropped it? Oh, Jesus. Well, there's a big opening right above you. That means I'm dropping this damn ceiling. I'm dropping that ceiling in the living room. I'm dropping that one in the dining room. And this uh, is basically a gut. Yes. We do not require a cold room, so that we could utilize that space, maybe storage, 
uh, will, will be fantastic. Really busy day today. We've dropped the ceilings. Now Joey's already started the pot lights. Last thing he's got to do today is put in the new panel. We've got the bros here today. They have to remove the exhaust lines from the hot water tank and the furnace. We also have Trimble windows here today. They've brought us a new window for the foyer. Dom, they had these nice crank windows here because, of course, at one point, this was an outside wall. So they had the crank windows. They get some fresh air, some light in here. But since we closed it off, I wanted to change it. So you brought me a window. Well, I brought you one full window. Before, with the crank window, there was a mullion down the middle, so blocking yeah. off a lot of light and just right in people's faces. You don't want that. Right. We bought one full window, all glass, fixed window, with blue chip glass to match the front door, adding the flow to the room and Very the entrance nice. of the room. And we also have double-sided tempered glass here because below 12 inches, you need safety glass, interior or exterior. So this way, especially when we heard there's kids in the, in the home, mm -hmm. we want them to be safe and sound, no one getting hurt. Makes absolute sense. Growing up, they're gonna be tripping all over the place and you definitely don't want them going through the glass. Yep. We have some loose brick that's supporting this whole column right here. This is a major structural beam. So what I wanna do is I just wanna get a jack post under it right about here, maybe even a little bit closer so I can take this out and actually do a repair there. It's probably in pretty good, but we don't wanna take that risk. This to me is a pretty scary thing. It's the major structure for part of the house and it's sitting on two loose bricks with a chipped out corner. I'm gonna build up the corner here with non-shrink grout and then actually lay my bricks back in properly with a mortar joint so that it's strong. I'll let the floor up slightly before I do that. Wait for tomorrow, wait for everything to dry. Then I can set my floor back down knowing everything is dry, sturdy, strong, the way it should have been done in the first place. So Robbie, when I crank this, I'm not gonna crank it very much. I just wanna get it off the bricks enough. Tell me when they're loose enough. So I want you to pull these two bricks, okay? We'll okay. work on this after this is all settled back in. But for now, let's pull this and we'll set them in properly once I crank it, okay? So let's just be quiet for one sec so I can hear if anything's breaking upstairs. Okay. Hear that? Yeah. Okay, just check that for me. See how loose those are for me. They're getting there, right? They're getting there. Okay, try that again. Oh boy. Very nice, okay, so we'll clean up this ledge right here, square it off, lay the bricks back in, okay? Okay. little things we have to do in order to get a tub in a finished washroom. We have a five foot opening. We have a five foot tub. How else do you get it in? Come through the hallway. Okay, so I'm gonna give this in to you. Do you have it? I got it. Just tell me when you got it, I'll go in. Watch the walls. Okay, well that's rusty on the fiberglass edge. That's okay, just hold it still. Okay. I'm going for coffee. Alrighty. It fits. It fits now. I'm gonna hold up, actually. I think, MJ, you and I are the tallest. Go back to back for a second. Oh, you wanna hold up drywall? Back to back. Okay, so MJ, you're holding up drywall? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, right. how's it on your line back there? Good. You're good? Okay, go. Atta boy, yeah. 
I'm just doing the finishing touches here. Last mudding and taping, me and Rob uh, framed this room, drywalled it. Now I'm just finishing it off. It's no longer a cold room. It's now part of the basement. It's insulated, vapor barrier. There's not gonna be any more cold issues. So just finishing it up now and uh, we'll paint it and it's done. I'm just installing the uh, the edge banding around the perimeter of, of the walkway. Uh, the existing walkway didn't have it. You're getting those one inch gaps, you're getting the weeds growing through it, the, the moss and everything. It's just, this will help hold everything nice and tight, keep our joints nice, keep our edging nice, and, and just, just hold everything together. What I believe is that you need to have a little bit of courage. A lot of people are afraid to do ceilings with tiles. Really, the most important part is always the back butter. That's the most important part. It has to stick. Now, this is just someone who was missing some common sense. I mean, you do want to vent a cold room. We did have a cold room under here. We did have an open porch. It was accessible as a cold room, but the main problem was they were venting into the garage. The problem with venting into the garage is that the carbon monoxide was going to go straight into the house. Well, I don't have to fill this whole void, but what I want to do is at least fill it with a little bit of insulation and fill the last four inches with a hydraulic, and that's what we're going to do here. Before I fill this hole, I want to use a concrete bonding agent so that the new concrete sticks to the old and no gases get through. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wow, it's the bathroom. <gasps> so pretty. Long time no see. Hey, folks. How are you? And you? Good. It's good to be back. Sorry home. you had yeah, to wait bet. so long. Okay. I love this crisscross <laughs> thing. We do this all the time. Don't we? This is what happens when there's four, right? Right. So you're ready to come home. We're going to open this up. We're okay. going to bring you inside and we'll start in the garage. Okay. Very exciting. Come on in. We got a new garage. There is no new cars in here. I'm really <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> you're going to have to go to the store for that. <laughs> Let's look this way. Frank is an awesome guy. I really, really love him. He put in a brand new panel. If you take a good look at this, you're even going to see that we have a surge protector for your cable, telephone, and your electricity. But let's look here. Wow, oh, look Well, you remember the last time we were here? Yeah, this whole area, I remember, was all open. So we made sure. holes and gaps. And... It, it was holes and gaps. But then we opened up everything. So we made sure that we put in the spray foam right across the front. We want to make sure that we have that buttered nice and tight to keep that Warm air in the winter, cool air in the summer inside the house. Even the front face wall was a definite important thing. Brand new door. And most importantly, not only did you get a new door, you have a, a door closer. Right. For safety. Right. For safety. Absolutely. That's fire and gas reasons. You want to make sure that door Close closes behind you. Yeah. No vents, no longer into your, <laughs> your right. cold room. So everything in here not only is airtight, don't worry about the gas is now getting into the house. Mike's addressed all the potential health hazards and health issues that can be causing, you know, any of us or the kids. It's just, you just know that you have a healthier home and that's a guarantee that, you know, you can't, it's very hard to come by. Now the guys, this oh. is Damon's fault. He actually, he actually had the guys pull it up and relay it. It is not new. It is your stone. But it's it looks beautiful. brand new. Yep, they leveled everything. You got that, no longer have that hole against the house, yeah. which I don't like. We even brought in Steve Graves. He is uh, from Better Contracting, love this guy. He went up there, he had some new downspouts. He's checked everything within the roof and he put, he actually removed two vents that were high up on the peak, correct? Right? That's right, they he were eliminated two because your power vent up there was, was sufficient enough. The other two weren't doing anything and they were too close. Right. They were actually canceling each other out. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> okay, what's new? That's new. That is new. Oh, wow, very good. And the brick? So how do you like seeing the brick? I like it. I like it. Because what it does is it creates a future point, right? Here's your new glass, oh. which matches. The door. I love it. I'm very traditional and, you know, it's hard for me to visually see things before it's done, but now that it's done, it looks beautiful. So here's what we did. We know that they drywalled right to the soffit. We showed you that, right? Took it all down. They actually went in from this side because we had that open cavity within yes. the garage and they buttered the ceiling. So they spray foamed all the ceiling here, keeping the cool like in the summer time. inside wow. and the heat in the winter, definitely. Now in here, this whole ceiling was unfortunately dropped. So you have all new electrical in here, all new pod lights. Every ceiling on this floor was actually taken down and the wow. wiring redone because of your electrical, the way it was done. You can't just fish right. electrical through the way this person did. So was it like it could cause a fire or it could? It wasn't safe. It wasn't even up to code. So is that code. safe? No. Let's take a look at the basement. Yeah. Okay. You remember this area? We showed you yes. this. The yeah. bricks, the two little bricks holding up. Two the little hole. bricks. It's all been redone, oh. hydraulic cement. We bring in nothing but the best guys, my guys. OK, this one was done as well. So we know we're good here. And they even drywalled the back up. They didn't have to, but they did, because they like you. That's oh, nice. thank you. <laughs> the bros came in, and they removed the air vent line that really wasn't necessary, not to mention installed incorrectly. They also put in a new exhaust from the furnace and the hot water tank. This is actually a proper gas exhaust line that's put on here, and the other one was not. OK, there's nothing special in here. Let's be honest. What we have is just a finished room. And that's the way it is, properly insulated now. We're just going to keep it warm upstairs. This is storage room. Yeah, but I want to put shelves and I buy a lot of coal. I dry and beans, and I just can put it all in here. We really need storage space because we have, you know, we do a lot of the cooking at home. And we constantly, we buy when we're at the grocery store and we realize, you know, you run out of space, so it's just a really practical space for us to use. Actually, I, I really need a pantry. Like, he talks about that all the time. Well, she has her food lying in bags around the basement, you know? Right? Oh, yeah. that, actually, I like I, to I, buy in advance and yeah. whatever. I cook everything at home, so. Well, this is going to be a pantry, I can tell. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you're ready to see upstairs. The last thing. you, you got to be kidding. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Well, it's a bathroom. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at the tub. Can I turn it on? Sure. Uh. <laughs> it's all new, like it's... a new tub, new tiling. It, it was an issue that we thought we'd have to live with. And we that... really, yeah, we, we were at the point where we're just like, we have to yeah, accept that's the way this it's issue. Be. You know, it's not just that it was an eyesore, but it was also just really difficult to use and lousy. And it's like a dream come true that somebody actually came and fixed it for us. I'm happy to see that even though you had to remove the the um, old tub, the floor was salvageable. Like, you didn't have to ruin it. Do you know how that tub was run in here? We cut a huge hole in your hallway there. <laughs> and that was in the staircase. Yeah. And pulled the tub in through there. Oh and then repaired it. You also have a new toilet. I oh. I'm seeing this That's brand new toilet. Nice. You know, it's all gifts and gift after gift after gift. It's, it's, it's hard to, it's overwhelming. It's, it's hard to process so much things that were given to us from total strangers. You happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That means I'm happy. Oh, yeah. no, we're happy. Thank you so much. You're thank you so, so much. much. You're welcome. Waiting for it. Well, I'll get in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So thank, thank you. It's a little small here. Thank you. you. Mike and the crew don't know us, and they've offered so many things to us to make us feel good about our home. It's just great. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the new toilet. I mean, it was such a dirty Oh, we had to. We broke the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the game plan, boys. We got a beam coming in here. We got a beam coming in here. We got a jack post here, 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 and here. Now, what I want you to do, Carl, you start from here, you come around this side. You start jacking up on this side. Rob, guys? Oh. Okay, here's the game plan here, guys. Okay, we got the beam coming across here, right? So much for the game plan. Back to square one. Water's gonna run down to here. It's really gonna sit here. It's gonna trickle, find its way in. I don't know how the inspector didn't spot these grading issues. We have electrical problems, plumbing problems, fireplace, water. The inspector clearly did not do his job. It doesn't look like it takes much to become an inspector these days. So I have this roof yeah. and this roof all coming to this east drop, and it just flows right over. I'll bet. Had I known that these problems were there, it would have made a big difference on, on the value of the home.
Debbie and her son Dylan wanted to stay in the same neighborhood that she was brought up in all her life. Found the right house, got a home inspection. Obviously, there's problems. I'm not just going to do a home inspection. I'm going to do a homes inspection, and I'm going to make it right. I grew up in this neighborhood and uh, very familiar with it, feel very safe in this neighborhood, and it's the perfect size for us. I took a look at it and was really um, happy with the layout and the size. This house backs onto a green space, and there are schools that are within walking distance for my son, both uh, junior and high school. There's creeks and a toboggan hill, soccer fields, everything that we need for him is within walking distance through this path out our back gate. The day that uh, we were going to do the inspection, I was running late, so I called the inspector and said, we might need to postpone this because I'm not going to make it on time. He said that was fine, he would come and he would start without me. So he started the outside without me around and I was about half hour late. And by the time I got here, he'd already completed the outside. And then I joined him and we walked around the rest of the house. It must be Debbie. Mike. I'm Mike. Very pleasure nice to meet, to meet you. Absolute pleasure to meet you. If you don't mind, can we start on the outside since uh, I've heard yeah. so much in the report that the problems are outside? Yeah, come right around. There didn't seem to be any major issues. They were all very small, uh, not in terms of financial costs. It, it, there really wasn't anything of significance. Oh, I don't like seeing this. <laughs> we have bad grading. Yes, the, it swamps right here when we have uh, a lot of rain or even just a small amount of rain. We get a lot of water build up right at the bottom here of the step. And that makes sense. Somebody's pulled out the downspout from the weepers. Good. The problem is, is that it's only a short distance away from the home and just... But do you have any flooding issues on the inside of the house right there? I have, yes. All the water from the very back of my yard, side of the yard, from the house, all runs to the same spot, which is underneath my dining room. And there's a crawl space down there and the water is penetrating the crawl space wall. The water damage has been there for a long time. This isn't something new. Not only do I see a low point right here, this is about the lowest point. It even gets lower when it comes to the house. And what we don't yeah. want, the water's gonna run down to here. It's really gonna sit here. It's gonna trickle, find its way in, and obviously get to right here where it's gonna get into the house. Yes. And it wouldn't surprise me, you definitely have water issues in the inside of your basement right here. Yes, that's exactly where they are. I don't know how the inspector didn't spot these grading issues. You, I can stand and see them, and I'm not trained to see these things. I don't like the way this peat roof comes in and creates a, a very low slope roof. I did not read that in the report. When we do have a heavy rainfall, the downspout can't manage the amount of water that's coming to it. Uh, there's uh, pitching roof lines that all lead to one spot. So I get a bit of a Niagara Falls coming over the dining room window. So it, my first winter here was full of surprises. Um, the first thing we noticed, my son and I, is that our living room is freezing. I looked in the attic and discovered that there is no insulation over my carport, and nor is there any kind of barrier wall to, to prevent the cold air that's rushing through my carport from getting into my living room. Do you know if the inspector was in both attic zones? Because right now I know there's two. The, uh, the inspector was not. Why? I do not know. The second attic I noticed shortly after moving in, and I do remember thinking to myself, I don't remember this in the report. So this is a <laughs> yeah, <laughs> This one needs a lot have, of work. Have you <laughs> stayed in this house at all? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... I, I didn't read anything in the report about this. No, no, it's just a no. shed. It's yeah, just... I wouldn't think but they'd even look at issue. that. <laughs> All the kids want to come play in here, but it's I just don't think it's very safe. And it also gets uh, hornets and wasps that go into the into the roof, so it's Probably when I'm doing stuff with the pool, I have here. to walk through like this. <laughs> That's usually not good. Let's go inside. <laughs> well, as it turns out, it looks like there's water issues and critters. Right at that point? Yes, it's Not absolutely. a surprise to me. Raccoons, once they live in there, they want to go back in there. Your pool water is really bad. Well, yeah. We haven't I'm kidding. Yep. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah, you haven't got it ready for summer. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Come in here. This is where the roof meets your house? Yes. Uh, do we have any water issues here? I see a slight crack here. Yes. I came home one day and there was a stream of water running into my dining room. There's a huge puddle of water on the floor here. So I got out the buckets, opened the yellow pages, and called a, a 
roofer. So he did a, a quick fix for me, broke up some ice that was up there to stop the water flow. He also noted that the, the water was actually penetrating on the wall in my dining room as well. Obviously, water issues, which were probably not present when you saw the house, and I'm going to assume the inspector. I, again, I don't know if you could have, if that was there or not before, but I'm guessing it wasn't, because it was freshly it painted yeah. in here. Well, I see a new <laughs> roof up there, right? That's a fairly yes. new roof. Yeah. So that Which tells... was a selling point. So this was all like this. You didn't make any changes. I exactly. Nice fridge, Just nice some stove. cosmetic I did, but. So you're just like a little designer, aren't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> you are. I like this. It's a very cozy home. Yes. Unique, though, eh? It's like a, our basement here. What's under here? This is crawl space. Crawl space. Can this I get is, to it? Yes, there's, there's access to the crawl space. Because I read nothing in the report about the crawl space. And I know, Jerry, I can remember standing right here with the inspector and talking about the crawl space and asking him specifically if he saw any water damage down there. OK, and he said? No. Nope, well, that's not the report. Looks fine in here. Looks okay. fine down there. Let's go take a look at it. OK. You know what? I love crawl spaces because they just give you so much storage. Yeah, it's, um, I thought it was great that I had all this extra room down here. So we definitely have a lot of signs of water coming in here. And the reason it is is dirt. And we can see because the water will always grab the dirt. So this is signs here, signs in the corner here. Now, is it a foundation issue? Uh, more than likely right now, I'm going to say that this issue is from grading. And it's allowing the water to penetrate and hit the foundation. So the first thing I would say is let's address the grading and see whether or not that stops any water. But we'll reverse. Let's beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem with the crawl space is that's what you have to do is crawl. <laughs> yes, you get the early yeah. on the crawl. Yeah, we have The family crawl. room downstairs in the house has a uh, gas fireplace. That electrical line that leads to the uh, oh, fireplace yes. is wrong. One day I discovered in my storage room, which adjoins the fireplace, that there was something plugged in there, and the wire was running under the wall. Turns out it runs under the wall to the fireplace. Yeah, it's exactly what it does. I could tell it was an extension cord that they put into a box to run the feed in to power this up. Now, so you can see the extension cord? Yeah, look, 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 right here. Amazing what happens when you look for something. You bend down here, you see it right there? Oh, wow. The, the fireplace has a fan on it, but the only time the fan works is when you're actually pressing the button. Truth is, this only requires about 25 watts for the fan. It okay. doesn't require a lot of electricity. But if it's not wired correctly, can it create a fire hazard? Yes. 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 I have had situations where the pilot light has blown out and the gas is on. Um, it's a family room. It's where kids come and play. And the design of it is, is not a safe design. It's, and the inspector never noted anything about the dial being broke, about the wire running through the wall, about the fan not working. Hey, hold on. You have a flex gas line that runs through the fireplace. This tells me whoever installed that fireplace is not a proper installation fireplace guy, OK? Why? OK. This is your feed line. It says natural gas right on that wonderful sticker, which is great. See how that copper line comes up and touches the ductwork? Oh, yeah. Now, because they touch, the two metals don't like each other. OK? And you don't touch copper against this ductwork because it will interact and cause a problem. The last thing you want is a hole in this copper pipe because it has gas in it. I don't like this. I'll tell you right now. Keep the electrical away from gas if you can. You know, let's not have the metals touching. All right, I mean, this is all done properly. We see the trunk that's from the old furnace. It's done properly and ties up. And here's our tea for the hot water heater. And I do not like this joint here, and I definitely do not like this joint here. Because if for any reason off-gassing comes back out of here, it comes into your house. OK, you have a gas dryer. Yes. I think that line's too thin. I think that's too small for your gas dryer. How's your dryer working for your clothes? Uh, for a new dryer, I have to run it a couple times to dry stuff. Maybe it's not getting enough gas to fire what is needed. Now, I'm going to bring in the right people, but because I see this, I would have put it in the report and said, bring in an HVAC guy, make sure all this works, double check the gas. I read nothing in the report about the gas, about the exhaust, about the gas to the fireplace, the electrical in the fireplace. I expected Mike would come in and, and see that there were some of the issues that I have noticed since I've moved in. I really didn't anticipate that he would find what he has found, and, and he hasn't even done his inspection yet. Might as well start 
on the roof to take a look at the roof. I mean, such a small area. Just look at the east trough here. And lots of spring. Listen to those birds. This size of east trough right here, because you can see the peak that comes right to approximately here. Now imagine all the water on that roof up there just coming down in a pouring rain, coming right down to this point here, and it overflows like a waterfall coming down here. It's not a bad job, really. The roof, you can clearly see the elbow right there on the bottom of this east trough here. And it's just really diverting the water across here, which means all the water up here, this roof and this roof, all come right to here. Not the best valley. I wouldn't have done it this way. If you can see, they did this roof first and then this one. The problem is, is a lot of the water is going to hit here and come rolling this way. With this slope of roof, in this case, being under a 312 pitch, it looks like it's around a 212 pitch, meaning for every 12 feet is two foot rise. So two foot at that end, 12 foot run. That's what we call 212, 312, 412, and on. If you shingle a low pitch roof, you have a greater chance of ice dams. It says right under the bundle of shingles, do not use on a slope under a 412 minimum 312 pitch. In winter, melting snow refreezes near the east drop, creating an ice dam. Any moisture behind the dam backs up under the shingles and it'll find its way into the house which means, really, we should have a roof-rolled membrane. The other problem up here is raccoons. Getting in where the soffit meets the roof, and somebody's bent some metal to try and stop them, but it doesn't look like that's doing anything. Obviously, they were trying to get in underneath here, where there is a vent in the soffit. So I looked at the front of the house. I looked at the back of the house, plus I was in the roof area in the center here. And what I did not see was anything to do with the roof vent. I saw nothing on the end of the front of the house or on the back of the house for vertical that showed me no signs of a vent. And I'm looking at, that's a vent upwards. So that vent is upwards to here, but yet in this, that I can see is just electrical. So there's no vertical, which tells me, is it going into the wall? Or at this point right now, I'm going to say that it's actually going nowhere. And this hood is simply just picking up nothing, and it's going nowhere. <sighs> nice sink so far. The exhaust appears to be fake. And it looks good, but it's not doing anything. Now, when I was in the crawl space downstairs, I noticed directly under the kitchen here was the trap. And it did have an access to the trap, so it had a clean out, which I liked. Here we have our double sink coming down. You never see this triple T like this, where the dishwasher comes in the top, the water comes in this way. I'm not opposed to this. What I'm opposed to is that the trap is downstairs. When the trap is downstairs, immediately I go, where's the vent? Where's the air behind water? So they renovated the kitchen. There's an air vent in the wall somewhere, but it's not here. Our port is right in this area with no insulation. We can see all the blown in cellulose throughout the roof. Directly over there, I see a vent from the kitchen. It's been insulated, unfortunately not right to the roof line. This is a semi-detached home, and it's nice to see a brick firewall separating the two houses. That's a big plus. That's odd. I have another exhaust. That would be for the bathroom upstairs. So, so far, it would appear that the exhausts from the bathroom and the kitchen, even though it doesn't look like the kitchen is tied in, go directly to the roof vents and not to a proper roof vent for the exhaust. In the corner, we see the baffle that looks like about two inches of airspace directly down to the vent. So what we're doing is this whole attic space is relying on venting really from that spot right there. Not enough air intake to get up to the roof fence. That's why it's so hot up here right now. Not enough insulation as far as I'm concerned. Then they changed the insulation and put down our 13 bad insulation on this side. So it's going to make the bedrooms very, very cold. We have some work to do. That's for sure. 
I'm going to work with you today. I'm gonna Excellent. Work so it's just going to, you know, today. The boss is back in town? That's just today. I'm going to wreck a few <laughs> things, take apart okay. a few things, and find out more what's wrong. We're going to have uh, Frank come in, Martin come in, the fireplace guys today, and we'll just, uh, just come up with an overview of what the issues are and what we're going to do about it. Okay. It's very frustrating when you you move in and you start discovering all of these these problems and you know where's the extra money going to come from? It's a little cooler today. It's freezing today. I have my overalls on. I'm ready yeah, to help you. Yeah, I know. You. You're going to help. You got new boots. I don't have new boots. I can get you some. Okay. It's charming, charming house actually. Yeah, cute little house. I like it. It's a nice neighborhood. Nice lady, Debbie and her son, Dylan. Yeah. Uh, bought the house just about a year and a half ago. They did a new deck on the back, brought in a contractor, did some work on the inside. Yeah. So here's what we have. We have electrical problems, plumbing problems, fireplace, water. You can see the grade here runs right to here, obviously then runs right underneath the yeah. deck. Today I'd like to pull up some of these boards here. What I want to take a look at is how the water is penetrating this. So here's the odd thing about this is the foundation was poured and they built it up with cinder block. Now, it's only one layer of block, but the right. problem being, this being the low area and the water coming in, I believe it could be coming underneath the ah, one I block. The so let's start by getting the guys to lay our traffic path right yep. through from the front door. Let's protect all the floors. Let's get it downstairs, protect the carpet, because we are going to be looking at the fireplace. Uh, we'll get some ladders, but more than anything, let's start by pulling these boards up and taking a look at the foundation as to how this water's getting in okay. from this run and what we can do about it. All right. Where's everyone? Come on, give me a hand. What is that? I'm doing this myself? I'll be on one side, I'll be on the other. All right. I think you're done. Well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. OK. The port foundation's too low. OK, you see the port yeah. foundation? Yeah. There's the cinder block. There's the port foundation. So all they did was do a spray coating or a rolled coating on top of it, and it doesn't even, it's not even going to make it watertight. It should have been parched. Right. Definitely let's get the Bone Brothers. OK? Gotcha. OK. Not only is this the lowest point, this pitch roof, look at how they have this pitch against the house. So I have this roof. Yeah. I have another on top right. uh, pitch roof in the center in between yeah. the two houses and this roof all coming to this east drop. And it just flows right over. I'll bet. We'll probably have to take that deck out, pull the sidewalks up, build up grade, pour a concrete deck or a landscape deck, and regrade this back this way. It's the only thing I can think of. We've got lots to do, buddy. I agree. Lots to do. Debbie does not want this thing anymore. It was in an awkward spot. It was taking up a lot of room. It really helps me. I have to take this fence down. I have to get this dug out today. The Bowens have an excavator here. The only way to get that machine in is through here with the shed up. I couldn't have done it. So Debbie asked. I happily obliged. And here we go. I like demo days. It's fun to break things. I'm trying to salvage everything on this deck, Mike, because we're not sure what we're doing here yet. I might reuse this deck. Yeah. So let's take the boards off carefully. So in other words, don't grab my crowbar. Don't grab your crowbar. I left it there for a reason. Dan, how you doing, buddy? Hi, Mike. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, you're welcome. I love this fireplace. I really do. Uh, the home inspector talked to Debbie, wonderful lady, okay, and he easily said that we can convert this back so simple into wood burning. Truth is, I think this is done wrong. When I took off some of the facade here, I found the gas line here is kinked, as well as where it goes into the unit. It's not silicone properly. You see the insulation there? Yes. Now, why did they stop that? They, they actually stopped that to stop the cold draft from coming down. Correct. I guess the easiest thing to do is to see what we can do as an insert and uh, change that, make it safe, make it right. Yes. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. I'm happy. Beautiful. <laughs> Sherry found a spider. It was on my hand. Was it? You'll be OK.
So today it seems like we're always racing against time. Today we have rain coming and I have to dig a giant hole right here so that Colin can actually get his waterproofing done. Today is all about waterproofing the outside, getting that done as much as possible so that we can start working on the inside. We want to waterproof the house before we even want to attempt the inside. Get this done out of the way and actually just start our landscaping here. Rain came down a little sooner than we thought here, right, Colin? What do you want to do? Since we're over the four foot mark, we're going to have to step this trench back because the rule is one to one. Every foot you go down, you got to be off the wall by a foot. Right, because so, that's going to soften this bank up, this rain, isn't it? Exactly. So we're going to put up a lean to just to keep this area dry so it doesn't get all muddy, so it's not dangerous to work in. Good timing. Okay, if you guys can start trenching that back, I'll get my guys working on the tarping system. Okay, great. All right, man. How's that? Good. Perfect. Now we built them a plywood lean-to to keep the water out of the excavation. We want to make sure that the foundation is dry and clean to ensure a good bond with the waterproofing. I want the bros in. I want them to take a look at the furnace, the gas lines, to the fireplace, to the dryer. Alex, we're going to need more insulation in the attic. Top this up. Let's get another okay. R50 up All there. Right. I think what we can do is if we raise up this side, and I'm talking the earth, and now make a walking path instead of here, make the walking path to that back gate. I'll tell you what, call and tail, yeah. and let's hear what he says. Morning, sir. How hey, are you it looks like you're ready to roll here, my friend. Got a new toy to play with. Hey, it looks brand new. You ready to work it in? Yep. This is what I got planned. Oh, okay, great. I started sketching some things up last night. Okay, so there's the house here. Yep. This goes towards the deck. Oh, that's really nice, bud. There's three different types of stone. There's two soldier courses. There's two soldier courses in here. Yeah. And <laughs> a little bit of a planting bed. Very nice job, bud. Okay, so uh, you have my crew today. Cool. Get them to work. Um, you're going to be on the machines, obviously. We yeah. have material coming at what time? Uh, 11. 11 o'clock, okay. I got to get rid of all the grass from where the patio is going. Get down to clay base. Yeah. Can't have any organic underneath it. Right. We've got a settlement issue here. We've, yeah. got, we've got an area that's been dug up. So we're going to have to pound the crap out of it to get it yeah. nice and compact. Plumbing is, uh, needs minor modifications. What's happening is the drain is actually uh, sloped too much before it's connected to the vent system. So right. uh, I'm gonna have to actually just modify that slightly. Uh, it's like, on a pretty steep slope, isn't it? It is on a pretty right. steep slope. So what I'm afraid of is once that water runs, let's say if the dishwasher kicks in, mm -hmm. uh, the, the volume of water will pick up um, uh, too much of a momentum and it may suck the water out of the trap and then the homeowner will get sewer gases in the house. Right. The trap is uh, in between the floor joists, yeah. um, but it's within a reasonable distance, so that's fine. It's just the way they connected the, uh, the fixture outlet pipes from the two sinks. Uh, that needs to be redone. Once that's taken care of, I'm going to re-slope that drain uh, in the crawl space automatically. So, but it's not a big deal, considering that I'm going to be working uh, upstairs in the kitchen. Um, I'll be redoing all that plumbing, so all those little adjustments can take place at the same time. The old panel was a fuse box, and you're limited on space, meaning circuits that are there, you can't expand that panel. So what we've done now is eliminated that panel. We've added a new panel in now. We used to have doubled up lines in the fuse panel. Those lines now are gonna have their own breakers. And in the future, if the homeowner wants to add anything, they have the availability of adding an extra breaker in and that circuit being on its own.
You guys ready with that? I've got a level. I don't want it above ground shear because what it'll do is it'll create a lip. If I come above grade, the concrete will pour over, creating a lip. If that ground ever sinks, frost gets onto it, and it'll want to heave that whole thing. Once frost gets under a lip of concrete, it gives it strength to actually push it up. Come here. Yeah, you're good. That's it. We got rock wool, a lot of rock wool, and yep. then we have the fiberglass underneath that. Probably best we just suck it all out. Yeah. They even help the electrician, right? He's going to go up there. He's got to Absolutely. do this a little bit of remedial work, right? Yeah. So it'll clear everything up for him. He's not searching for wires. Right. And it'll expose any electrical problems that, that are buried that he can't see. Before we blow new stuff in, we're going to spray foam. Okay. We're going to air seal that whole attic up. Right. Oh, so you're talking about buttering it yes. first and then yeah. adding on top of that. Then adding on top of that. Ooh. That's interesting. And why? Okay. Explain that for me. Yeah. 40% energy loss. Yeah. Uh, due to air infiltration and exfiltration. Okay, so that acts like the vapor barrier, like it's yep. supposed to do. Yep. And then, uh, and then you get your insulation value with that. Air seal it. A ton of insulation on top of that. Bring it up to an R50. Right. And it'll be better than it ever was. Mm -hmm. And that'll stop Brilliant. any moisture from getting in the attic. Any kind of mold issues will uh, stop that. We have about a 212 pitch on this slope here. This is where we have issues with ice dams. Uh, poor roof design. Uh, too low of a slope. Um, you know, probably lack of any preventative measures like like ventilation and and, and no rack coming shield. up the wall. So that that exactly. one point right there, that's why I'm having so much water reach the basement. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this looks great. We're I, I love wood. that idea. If you like wood. this? You're this, really gonna love this. All right, we're done. We're done. Good job. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, sir. <laughs> We have a huge day today. Our interlocking stone has just arrived, which means we can actually start getting it down, getting that part finished. Better Contracting is actually starting the repair on the roof today. Big job ahead of them. We also have Gary in the basement. He's attaching the gas lines to the fireplace and the dryer. A lot going on. Well, this is a new fabric. What is this? Geotextile, it's a woven geotextile. It stops any migration of silt, but it lets the water flow through it. Oh, I if see, because we have clay underneath here. Yeah, what we have is clay, so you get wet and it'll start moving in. If you ever right. dig up an old patio, Absolutely. you know you end up with mud. So you're saying because the clay is, has so much moisture in it, eventually that gravel will want to sink, creating dips in your yeah. walkways. We'll put a layer of geotextile right on the clay, then crusher, then another layer of geotextile, and then sand on top of that to make a really stable base for the interlocking. It still lets the water through, but prevents the interlocking from settling. That makes so, sense to me. We've got a lot of wet soil here, so we yeah. want to actually protect this patio from sinking. Exactly. Makes sense. Let's roll it open. Cool. problem with this area is I need three feet by code in front of my panel. Easiest way to do that is by getting rid of my shower here. Debbie doesn't want it anyway and it will also help us. So Rob and Sherry, I just want you in the bathroom taking down the, the mirrors, the glass shelf, everything that's going to be knocked down if we do this, okay? And Carl, just help me out here. I love that. That is sick. All right. That is sick. Can I just go play outside? No, you need to help me. things poorly it makes it much easier I think we can just dismantle this right here and get Martin to cap that drain we can bring that wall right across in the inside and look at the room it gives us now it gives us perfectly three feet a couple of shots for Mike a before and after you know what share bear your dad thought this would be really fun for you to play with you know what I mean by playing with Fixing it. 
which I think is a really good idea. This is gonna teach you a little bit about structure. I mean, this is a really cute little thing. She loves it. It's like a little bit of the country in her backyard here. You can see the roof sagging because these posts are sinking right through the floorboards. It would never went right into the ground or onto a beam of any sort. So we're gonna start by just ripping this all out, guys. I want to support this on either side, put them onto a patio stone so we can start dismantling this, okay, guys? Wasps. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a few in there. Oh yeah. Oh my god, look at that one. Very nice, you got the what? Oh, buddy, I'm replacing this. I'm reinstalling this. Are you kidding me? I did not want you to cut that out. Oh my God, I'm just kidding. Thank you very much, <laughs> sir. <laughs> no, it's the only way to get this out. I can't this, get this it thing, out. This thing was so old. I was trying to take it, this, take this apart from the inside yeah. and, and it was just did not want to come out, so. No worries, I got to cut this in half to get it out anyway. Don't worry, you can have your heart back. Thank you. More. Stop. I love being the boss. It's kind of fun to tell people what to do, and even better when it's well. Yeah, except she's bossy, that's the problem. Where'd she gets that from? And you're disobedient. <laughs> Hey, Stevie, I just wanted to talk to you about this. I knew this was ice damming here. Because of the two roofs coming down, it isolated the little middle roof. It was totally isolated on its own, and there was absolutely no insulation on in this. And that is why she's got peeling paint inside the house here. Yeah, absolutely. We've got too low of a slope here for, for shingles. They did a preventative measure here with ice and water shield. But uh, as you can see, it transferred a leak to the fascia board, rotted it out. And if you look at the nails even, you know, they're rusty. So the, the water was getting underneath the shingles. Well, there was absolutely no insulation in this one area right here. So all that heat all winter is just coming up here. And think of this, all three of these roofs emptying into this little three foot trough, that amount of ice in that, and then that heat hitting it, it was just, this probably was soaked all winter. Yeah, and probably, uh, uh, you know, six inches thick of ice right. uh, throughout the winter. Right. You know, transferring all the way back up the slope as well. So. Absolutely. Well, it's a good thing we uncovered it, man. Yeah, so yeah, with the with the added insulation, we're gonna get some ventilation in this area to, to help breathe this section of the attic, um, and then treat this roof, this low slope, like a flat roof. Um, that should solve any uh, future issues. And not meaning that you want to turn this pitch into a flat, you just want no. to treat it as a flat. Yeah, keep, keep the same slope, obviously, keep the same structure, just use roof, uh, flat roofing material versus shingles. Right. And the purpose of that is that ice can't dam underneath it. best about laying sod yeah, is that it's final. It's like paint, you know, Craig gets all the glory at the end of a job. He comes in and puts a coat of paint on it and everyone goes, oh my God, Craig, it looks beautiful in here. And we've done all the work behind that. Well, that's what I find here. We've done all the work underneath it and this is like a coat of paint. It just finishes up the job. The guys have removed the old fireplace insert leaving exposed brick, meaning we had to repaint it. While I'm here, Damon asked me to uh, give the room a facelift. You can see they've got a pretty drastic paint color. They want a hard green and a bright white. So what we want to do is just warm up this room. We're going to use some uh, topes just to make it more appealing. 
less of a contrast between the two colors. So we're gonna use a dark color on the bottom, 50% of that color on the top. Then we're gonna go over the high points, the stucco texture, just with the glades. Give it a bit of texture, and uh, it's gonna go pretty quick. We should be done in a couple hours. I know this was a bit of a tough one, eh, bud? But uh, you got it knocked off. We got it vented in the front. We're actually bringing air in finally and exhausting it at the top. So what did you come up with on the peak there? Oh, uh, well, we've added some vents. It's yeah. a little undervented, so we've uh, basically increased uh, some exhaust there right. as well. This uh, gable vent is actually going to act as an intake. Which is brilliant, right? You get a good breeze in there. Well, like, yeah, the vent. problem here is that just the nature of the design. This is going to allow air in and uh, sort of get exchanged with the, uh, the roof vents, which are up higher on the roof. I'm just doing uh, some of the railings now for this little shed. It's still a lot of work. It's a little time consuming, but it'll look great in the end. A couple of rocking chairs and some beers would be perfect. Where are these going, buddy? Wherever the missus says. <laughs> I knew she was the boss. It's our last day. We're giving the house back today. Very exciting. It's about to rain, actually. I'm pretty sure a storm's coming, so going as fast as we can so we can finish this up. Oh. Hi, Kitty. Nice to see you again. Wow. What have you been it's doing? It's good to see you. Thank oh. you so much. This get, looks so great. I'm getting paid early. <laughs> yes, I get some you change? are. Oh, there thank you, you so much. Wow. Change. I like that. <laughs> it's so clean looking. At the front, it is clean looking. We didn't even paint, right? Eh? At the no, front. No. Okay, you notice you have a new gable vent. I do notice that. Yes. Uh, what I like what Steve did is he dressed up the front, did new fascia soffit on the front, new fascia soffit, east trough, downspout actually throughout the whole house. <laughs> and wow. uh, perforated soften underneath. We want air coming in. You need air up in the attic. Yes. He did strip the back area. He did put up the uh, valley roll that we love to torch down. And he actually, okay. where the area the critters were getting in, he's boxed that out completely and solved everything to do with problems on the roof. Wow, that's great. And you notice you got a new fence. Oh, it looks beautiful. It that's looks right. really great. <laughs> I love cedar. It smells so great. It looks I great. I can smell it from here. Can you smell it? Yes, yes, I can. Well, let's go inside. OK, Take sounds action. good. So you got a new kitchen? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. A working kitchen now. Well, you have a working <laughs> fan. Yeah. That ductwork was in the attic. And it drives me insane that they didn't hook it up. It just really does, because one, it's against code. You gotta have it. Or you're gonna turn it into a charcoal filter. We got such a beautiful fan. Hook it up. Yeah, if it's insulated there, you line. Access. Insulated line, brought in Alex. Yep, we, had, we buttered the uh, your whole attic space, first of all, to give it a vapor barrier. You're basically just putting a layer of spray foam. Okay. Onto directly the onto your ceiling. So it gives you an air vapor barrier and it gives you a minor thermal break. And we really like that. Stopped the hot from eating cold. Then it came back in and put in a whole bunch of blown in cellulose. I'm really looking forward to the winter months so that I can feel the warmth in my living room for the first time since moving in here. Um, what they've done, apparently it's an 85% recycled paper that they use too in the insulation. So it feels great to, to know that there's a green product up there and that the spray foam that they put in will probably prevent spiders from getting into my house as well. Wow. Is this your, is this your shower curtain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's nothing wow. grand, okay? But it kind of looks good, doesn't it? Really? It looks really good down here. Really good. I didn't anticipate this at all. I didn't like the color, but we can look at the yeah. fireplace. Let's go over the fireplace. I know, it looks real. What I like is an open fire. It's safe, everything about it, and that's including bringing in Gary and running all new gas lines in here, making it right, no electrical the way they did it. Okay, so it's it, still gas. It's still gas. Yes. Wow. And, and why not? It's efficient. Okay, nothing really big here. Nothing really big here, but you know, making things right is what we do. So we have a new, I love this lint trap. 
new gas line to your dryer, which was wrong in the first place. Yeah. You should have caught that, by the way. You should have caught that. Should have caught the gas line in the fireplace. Should have caught a few things. You notice we have room here now. Yes, a lot more room. Took out your shower, right? Because you yeah. didn't need it anyways. Didn't Toilet, make it, it a powder room. You almost lost your whole bathroom. Now at least you have a powder room. You do have a new panel. I used to be very cautious about what I plugged in at the at the same time, so I wouldn't use my hair dryer if I knew the microwave was going. I wouldn't use the kettle if I knew, uh, you know, another appliance in the house was running. The new breaker, you know, I feel great about the fact that if something goes wrong, it will automatically turn off and, and I can't get harmed. I think Debbie's distracted because we have a window in front of her. She can see into the backyard. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm not as tall as you, so I can't actually Don't see you. Don't even look. Don't even look. Don't even look. Actually, you want to go up there? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, I do. Come on. Because I'm hot anyways. Oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty hot in here. Pull it. Open the gate. And up to you. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Yes, sit down. Sit down. Wow, this looks awesome. I am speechless for what they've done on this patio. It, uh, it really blows me away. I really didn't anticipate something like this. You remember how it looked before. Everything drained this way. Yes, yes. This came up, what, nine inches? It came up at least nine inches. I mean, the dip from that corner to this corner was that severe. But before this was all done, that was all dug up right down the whole side of the house doing all the waterproofing right down to the weepers. So as we walk, let's take a walk. Let's OK, a walk. down my new path? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that works, <laughs> the eh? The path. Kind of nice the way they did the stone, the way they did the garden bed, and the way we control that water that's coming. Keep it away from the house. Control it this way. Control it that way. And if necessary, control it that way. Really smart. But everything had to come up. And then layering all this to make sure we had that run, I had Sherry. I called this Sherry's house. <laughs> How do you like that? She it did a good like, job, Jerry. I was ready to tear that thing down, but it looks really good. I can't believe what the crew here has done. Like, I was in shock when I saw that my whole foundation had to be dug up, that we had to put all the membrane across it. Um, I'm shocked to see the final product here. It was a lot of work, and I, I can't imagine having to come up with that price tag um, without the help of the team and without the help of Mike. Pleasure wow. to meet you. Oh, you, are you? <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so much, Mike. I heard something you were going to cook on the barbecue. I Well, I, I actually got somebody else to do the cooking. Oh, Did you? <laughs> Even better. But that's OK. Definitely. Thank you, David. No worries. I know you worked really hard here in the in the really, really hot weather, which it just get must hot. have been really hard for you guys. Oh, come on. Look at the color. I know, Jeez. I know. <laughs> I think that means you're not working hard enough. Oh, I don't know what that. Hey, hey, I don't know what that. Hey, hey. I got you um, a little present that I hope you can use over and over again. A branding iron. A branding iron. iron. You get to brand my fence for me. Yeehaw! <laughs> hey, she's smoking. Uh, nice. Nice. Hey, get away from that. Hi, Cole. Cheers. Good job, guys. Good job.